When you research survival preparedness, you see a lot of bug out bags filled with supplies for evacuating yourself from whatever immediate horror has befallen you. But here's the thing. In the case of sudden chaos here in New York City, I'm unlikely to be able to get out of here on foot, at least not quickly or immediately. I can't carry a lot or run really fast, so my best bet is to lay low here at home where it's safe, where I have supplies, until any immediate events are over. And see, most major transportation emergencies in New York City have a little bit of notice. So if there's a blizzard or a hurricane or a transit strike, we know about those things in advance and can prepare and stay home. So what I can't help but worry about is a, a sudden emergency, like a building collapse or if a bridge or tunnel is compromised. You know, your standard 9-11 or Cloverfield type situations. So today I'm going to share with you what's in my get home bag that I leave at the office. Um, it's got some things in it that I think would help me get home. It's realistic to carry and uh, I can wear it even if I have to swim across the East River. So let's take a look at what's in my get home bag. The first and most important thing is a sturdy pair of shoes. I can't tell you what kind of peace of mind it gives me to have a sturdy pair of shoes at the office. Ladies don't always wear the most practical footwear and I don't like to be thinking about emergency preparedness when I pick out my outfit in the morning. So I keep a, my old pair of trail runners in my desk at work. I have a set of hearing protection, some bungee cords if I need to strap anything to the outside of my bag, a pocket knife, Inside this plastic bag, I've got some matches, a backup battery for my cell phone, and an envelope full of important documents. It's a copy of my birth certificate, a copy of my passport. Also in this Ziploc bag is some pieces of pre-cut moleskin for putting on my feet or other areas that might be getting a blister. It's important to be able to walk or run through the whole way even if your feet get wet. On the outside of my bag, you can see I have a, a whistle attached there, an emergency whistle for calling for help. I've got a dust mask. You keep that in a plastic bag, not just for in case it rains, but because they absorb things from the air if you don't. I've got a waterproof cell phone case. I can still use the cell phone while it's inside this waterproof case. And then inside I've got also a can of seltzer water. Now, I have a big water bladder in here that I would fill up before I left the office. We have fresh water supply in abundance at the office, but uh, I also have that can of seltzer just in case I need to go right away. I figure also I could use the aluminum can for something if I needed to. I've got some Mylar safety blankets for warmth. They don't really take up too much space. A small bottle of scotch because, well, why not? I guess I could use it to sanitize a wound, but really it's just for liquid courage in case I get really scared. And then inside this dry bag is a full change of clothes. It's got a pair of warm winter leggings, a black t-shirt, a replacement pair of socks, and a pair of underwear. Also in here is my headlamp, which would be my primary source of illumination if I needed to travel at night. I've got a length of paracord. You never know when you might need some rope. Also I have this headband. It'll keep the hair out of my face, so I guess I can also use it as a a tourniquet or uh, an insulator in case I needed to punch out any glass windows. There's some things in here that are already in my everyday carry that I'd have to remove from my purse to put in this bag before I go. That would be some pepper spray, some zip ties, some scissors, and a granola bar. Also at my desk I have some safety glasses already. I should write down to remember to bring those or just pack a pair in there already. And then there are some things that I might want to add to my bag to upgrade it. Let me know what you think or what your experience has been. I thought maybe spray paint could be useful for a, in a bright color to mark your path and leave a trail for others or, or just generally make a, a sign if you needed to signal emergency personnel. Some cash, a radio. Should I get a ham radio or just a regular crank emergency radio? Uh, maybe some candy or gum, something for blood sugar and also just to make you feel good while you're moving on out. A crowbar, some kind of wrecking bar, it seems like a big commitment for me because they're kind of heavy and, and I'm not very strong, so um, I'm not sure how useful that would actually be for me, but in the case of a building collapse, I suppose it would be better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Um, and then some binoculars and just a little bit of toilet paper. 
you have any other suggestions, I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments. There are some things I left out on purpose. Let me know if you disagree. That would be a first aid kit. I figure if I get hurt, I'm just going to keep going or I'm going to get so badly hurt I can't keep going. Um, no fire making and no shelter because I don't plan on stopping. So that's my get home bag. It's just kind of a rough draft. I'll do another video once I upgrade it a substantial amount and let you know how that goes. Um, and if you have any requests about videos you'd like me to make on the survival topic, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Mm, let's see about this. Mm. Oh, it looks so good with the Nutella in the middle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see that? Mm. Mm-hmm.